But without more ado, let's introduce the first of our speakers today. So it's my pleasure to introduce Jeff Torrance from Qualcomm, who's going to talk about how digitization can be enabled throughout the entire supply chain. Jeff, please welcome. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Um, so think about supply chains. We, we want to think about digitizing them. Why do we want to digitize supply chains? Lots of reasons, but sort of three principal ones. If you can create a digital twin, you can create visibility. You can get data, and you can learn from the data and improve business processes. And finally, you can have real-time data, make real-time decisions, and solve problems quickly before they manifest into much more expensive situations. So that's why we want to um, why we want to digitize the supply chains. Um, what's Qualcomm's role in that? Qualcomm provides cellular modems or cellular IoT modems. These are chips that connect devices to the cloud. So it's like the technology in your phone, but it enables you now to be able to connect all sorts of devices. So those chips exist inside little modules like this or like this. And then these, these, device, these can be embedded inside devices that can be used for tracking. The way tracking devices are made today is a pretty complicated process. So we make chips. We have partners who build um, modules. Those modules need to be certified. Perhaps another company will buy a module and design a printed circuit board go to an original divine manufacturer, an ODM, get the board manufactured, put on another processor, then the software to be put into our chip, software to be put into that chip, there's a battery, there's a certification, there's building a tracking device, and then there's a lot of development in the cloud. You have to divide, develop device management, which is the cloud-based software that makes sure the tracker is up to date, integrates it into your workflow. There's connectivity management, connecting to different mobile network operators, selecting are you going to connect on 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, managing that around the world. So, so when people build tracking devices today, there's an awful lot of complexity in that process, and a lot of parties involved in that process. And frankly, a lot of it is repeating from customers to customers. So put that in perspective, you should think about the tracking business from our point of view. We see that as like an opportunity about 100 million pieces per year. And there are tens or hundreds of devices and companies building trackers. So maybe someone's going to ship maybe 1 million or 2 million trackers, maybe considerably less. And they have to go through all those steps to make things happen. So that's historically. How, um, how digital tracking devices have been made. So we tried to think about that problem, we tried to think how can, we, um, how can we sort of create a platform where everybody doesn't have to repeat the same work and they can deploy their capital on differentiation and building a, a better end solution. In some ways I think this is analogous to what happened in PCs in the 80s, you know, as you remember there were like scores of home computer companies, all making their own operating system, their own physical hardware, their own standards, their own applications. And then IBM created a uniform platform that was on a standard process of, and a standard operating system, MS-DOS, uh, PC-DOS. And then that was great for the, you know, making PCs, but probably a lot more importantly than that, it accelerated the innovation and differentiation because people could focus on building software on top of a common platform. That's how we try to think about our AWARE platform for logistics. So AWARE is effectively a cloud-based interface where people can develop um, supply chain applications and then everything below that is taken care of. We, we developed AWARE, we, we anchored it on three fundamental principles. First one was usability. So you remember that long list of things I said you had to do to build a tracker. It involves lots of embedded software and sort of complicated, I think it was nerdy work, yeah? We, we've taken care of all that, we've tested all that, and now anyone who wants to build a supply chain uh, solution can program purely in the cloud. 
So that basically increases the number of developers by an order of magnitude. There's 10 times more cloud developers than there are embedded developers. So simplicity was the first anchor. The second anchor was to create scale. So some devices I can fit in my pocket, you know, like a tracking device. This is a pill cap. You can track pharmaceuticals from dispensing to, um, uh, to the customer. Uh, built with a partner called Meg. Then we have another uh, package tracking device. This one um, we built with a company called Icotech. You can come to our stand, you can see scores of these devices that people are building. And then the third thing is we drove a whole load of innovation to increase accuracy and availability. So we added satellite communications. We had a whole load of uh, proprietary technologies to get more accurate, more available location. That's what we did. A little bit of a non sequitur. Meat sales are increasing in Korea. Um, it, so actually, I think in the next few years, uh, meat will overtake Korea, uh, overtake rice as the staple uh, food in Korea. And that's given rise to a company called Meatbox. Meatbox is a company that ships meat to 700,000 restaurants throughout South Korea, 60,000 butchers and distributors. And they wanted to digitize that process. They wanted to have real-time visibility of temperature, humidity, where is the meat, when is the meat, what's happening with the, 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 the sort of fulfillment and distribution of the product. So they turned to a partner of ours called Zin Corporation. So Zin Corp, we have our aware platform. We make that available to our SI partners. And in this case, an SI partner, Zin Corporation, um, uh, spoke to, worked with Meatbox. Very, very simple deployment. They took, a, I haven't got this one here, they took another standard uh, device from our portfolio of third party um, OEMs, were able to integrate that into Meatbox's supply chain. And now Meatbox can provide real time visibility to their suppliers, to their customers, and their employees of where their produce is, and uh, time, in, time index that and provide temperature and humidity in real time. The net result was really positive. So the feedback uh, Meatbox gave to Zincorp was, hey, we, we, um, they have some internal KPIs on uh, performance, 20% improvement in uh, those KPIs based on this real-time visibility. And actually, the customers liked it. They could see what was coming, when it was coming. And in net, are ordering 10% more uh, product as a result of the digitization project. Overall, like I said, we're trying to build something that's simple, scalable, and innovative. And I tried to give one quick example, which is the, I, I think, the meat distribution in South Korea. But this applies in, in many places throughout supply chains as a way to accelerate digitization, provide more visibility, and from that visibility, allow people to share data, allow people to create data lakes and create business insights and to be able to provide real-time corrections to the data. So with that, thank you very much.